Luke, and, I have a question for you. How yes. excited are you for Jamison Williams? How do you feel about that or that pick? If he starts day one, I'm very excited. If he doesn't, if he doesn't play until November, I'm disappointed because uh, for the last few years, all I have been hearing is Lions are always drafting hurt players, and now all of a sudden it's a receiver, and the fan base has lost his mind. But the reality is, is this: I I, I can only get as excited as the fact that. When it comes to Jamison Williams, I just don't think that we should be doing this thing of taking receivers in the, in the first round anymore. Okay, I get that. Can you list off, and I don't mean to put you on the spot. No, you're good. Go ahead. Going to the the players we've drafted that have been injured. I'm curious about that list. Oh, Calvin Johnson was hurt. <laughs> uh, you had, uh, you had, uh, was, Brandon Pattergrew was hurt. Yep. Um, I'm trying to think who else they was uh, coming right. in off of it. Ryan Broyles came in. Ryan injured. Broyles came in injured. Mm -hmm. uh, Javid Bass was another one who was a concuss away. Um, yeah. I think Titus Young. That was so bad. I had – so Javid Bass, quick story, because we do stalls, right? So I did a, a custom jersey of only the – on the back of his name instead of with his number. Oh, okay. It was so great. It was so great. And then he was done. If so, he was, so if, electric. If he never got hurt, he would have been an amazing running back for us. Because yeah, he – he I agree. He was he was a, he, he was, was very so talented. good. But he I reminded mean, me of Swift in a lot of ways. No, I, I mean, think I, yeah. I agree. It is one of the reasons why I get frustrated when I when I see that Swift and Williams are splitting carries so close. I feel like they yep. need they need to pick one workhorse. And I, I showed this to to the subs, and I said, "You can't show me a team that had a, a tandem where their rushing attempts are this close. None of them. You, not Bradley Chubb, uh, Nick uh, Chubb." Uh, I mean, yeah, Nick Chubb, Chubb, Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Nope, not even close. Yeah. You can't okay. find a single one Maybe. over the last five years who carries were that close. None. Yeah, that's that's one thing that they brought from the Saints that I wish they would have kept in New Orleans. Yep. Is is this oh. weird splitting of the backs because DeAndre needs way more touches than he gets. Yep. And I yep. think as great as Jamal is at some of the things he does. DeAndre is just more complete, in my opinion, yes. because he does everything a little bit better. And but, if you don't split it so much, maybe Jamal doesn't get hurt, and then you can run him when, right? You that is that no, the idea? No, not really. No, I, I, I don't know that. Yeah, because DeAndre is getting hurt too with them splitting carries. It's just it's rhythm. It's uh, thank you. It's rhythm. Yeah, it's, it's rhythm. It's, it's it's rhythm. It's consistency, and again, it's almost a little level of predictability because. Sure. What they did with Jamal, like they, yes, they did throw it to Jamal a couple times, but not nearly as much as they do with Swift. It's kind of what happened with the Lions when they had Theo Riddick. Like, it oh my, it's, so like, much it's, of like it's like you're in my soul right now. Preach this story <laughs> now. Let it, let it happen. Let, let, let the church say yes. Go ahead, Pastor. Let it happen. Because oh, it was my God. A, it I need church a, bells. It was noted. such a telltale. When Theo Riddick would come in the game, you knew. He was, you were throwing. Option, yeah. Halfback option. It's Talk a halfback him. option every single time. So it's a little bit of the reverse. When Jamal comes in the game, you know it's a run somewhere up the middle. Talk to somewhere him. in that area, that's where Jamal's going. When DeAndre is in the, in the game, there's at least an element of he can do it all. They can flex him out. They can bring him in. I even wish they had did it more, and I get it. It was a little bit of injury, but I wish they had done it more when they would have DeAndre and Jamal both in the game because now you really don't know what the hell's about to happen at mm. one all snap. So... I'm hoping by having Ben Johnson that things will be a little more dynamic, a little more unpredictable. And hopefully DeAndre does get more carries because I think he has every bit of the ability to be like over a thousand yards rushing and like 800 to 900 yards receiving. Like he's that and, good. And based on what Dan Campbell said, yeah, we're going to have more tempo. We're going to be able to do all this stuff. And this is like that's, all of these things. Yeah. And this is an area where I think, their loyalty to certain players could get them in a little bit of trouble. I think they love Jamal so much where it's like, well, we got to get him involved. And it's like, trust no. me, I understand. I'm but, with you, but, but like, no. Pick your moment. Yeah. Just, just pass the plate around people. Just, just don't make your donations too small. Don't make them too big, but put something in the plate. Cause when church is in session, I think it needs to be, uh, uh, given this gratitude. And the reality is, is this, Everything that that man just said, I want y'all, in case y'all hard of hearing, hit the rewind button on it. It's facts. <laughs> because all you have to do is ask yourself one question, right? And that one question mm -hmm. is, is, is your offense more explosive with Jamal Williams or DeAndre Swift? I have fans telling me he can't run between the tackles and off tackle. And I'm like, oh, my. 
And I'm like, I'm like, he I had I literally had a fan tell me that the only reason he had a good rushing attack against the uh Steelers is because that's a one-off. I said it's not a one-off. He was doing it in Georgia. You have to get the man the ball to get him in rhythm. Nobody can get in rhythm where you're coming in and, and you're doing it. And I said it's a reason why when you see Jamal come in. Teams load the box. It's because they, they feel like it's going to be a run. And by the time mm-hmm. you start calling the play action, oh, well, good luck. Yeah. Well, you're so, calling play action once it once you're down by two scores. Right. right? Like, like it, it doesn't it doesn't work that way. But Scotty, I do want to go back to your to your point about to yeah about Jamison. But yeah. overall, for me, I just my attitude to James Williams, Jamison Williams is basically this. It, it, it sounds good in theory, right? Mm-hmm. But as far as I'm concerned, we had a Calvin Johnson and nothing was really yielded from that. And sure. so if he's if he's going to be something like that, a superstar, then great. And if he's not, then great. But the reality is, is I don't like the fact that you took a guy who may not be able to help us until like end of October, November. Sure. This, so, is, the, this is the one thing I'll, I'll push yeah, back against that a little bit, Luke, because. I, I, I definitely hear what you're saying. Like if he if he's not able to start though, I'm not as 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 bummed out about it. I do want to see him start because I'm basically on the kick of give Jared Goff every opportunity to prove that he's not the guy. And if that means that you gotta draft a dude that can possibly run a four two and Jared Goff still can't get that dude the ball, then that just is a clear indication that this guy really isn't the guy. So give him whatever weapons he needs. And whenever he gets there, Jared Goff still has to find a way to make it work because he's the veteran quarterback. But ultimately, I think a lot of us wanted the Lions to take a receiver. I don't think none of us thought they would trade up to get one. And I think the the excitement that you're seeing is, I think it's more so excitement of the aggressiveness, in my opinion. It's it's, it's I'm excited about the aggressiveness, not necessarily Jamison Williams, because like I said in our, in our podcast when we broke down the draft, I didn't watch any film on Jamison Williams until he got drafted. Right. So I was not familiar, like he wasn't even on my radar. But for for Brad Holmes to have that level of conviction and that level of like, no, I'm gonna go up and commitment. Get my guy. The word I would I go to is commitment. He's committed to whatever they I believe. Say, I say conviction. Conviction, fine, I, conviction. But his conviction to go get him, he went and got him. Yeah. When was the last time a GM went and got somebody? I mean, well, when we had that was any when we had Quinn Trisha here, right? It was it was carrying Johnson. Guys that, yeah, taking guys that shouldn't be drafted where they where they were drafted and. Trade Another injured player. Yeah. Yep. Doing, doing things like that. Now, well, I'm, t- I'm saying not dumb things, I guess, is what. But- <laughs> <laughs> me, I would me- like to qualify it. I would say this, though. Like, the injury, Convicted to do smart things. The injury isn't as much of a concern to me only because it's an ACL. And I just feel like in this age of the NFL that we're in, like it it just happens. It's I'm almost like it, it just feels like a thing that, like, most receivers are going to have to deal with at some point in time. And so not saying that he couldn't possibly re-injure it. I think that's why they're going to take it slow with him. But it isn't like a a detriment to the pick. I think I would rather them have been that level of aggressive and and made that pick um, than possibly sitting back and then taking somebody that maybe doesn't perform to the level of, of Jamison Williams once he's healthy. 